King Gizzard released two albums in 2019. First was Fishing for Fishies, a blues rock record with electronic elements in its second half. The album, like a lot of Gizzard's music, is about the effects humanity has had on the environment. The use of plastics, the morality of fishing, the decline of honeybee populations. The world is in a bleak spot, however, it's contrasted by a lively and somewhat chill soundscape. What Gizzard put out next was quite the contrast. Infest the Rat's Nest is the band's exploration into thrash metal. The record was influenced by bands like Motorhead, Exodus, and Creator, and just like Fishing for Fishies before it, Infest the Rat's Nest tackles the issues humanity faces in terms of the environment. However, where Fishies remained upbeat, a sort of celebration before the end, Infest embraces the chaos and uses the now dysfunctional world to tell a story about economic inequality, widespread disease, space travel, and revenge. King Gizzard tapped into something incredible with this record, and I think it's time we dig into its meaning. Side A of the record consists of four connected songs that set up the world the story takes place in. While Side B is much more action-oriented, the beginning of the record introduces us to the conflict and the dynamic that fuels the later half. Planet B starts and calls for the listener to open their eyes and see. Planet Earth has become unsustainable over years of neglect. Humanity is running out of food, cities blanket the land, it's snowing in the desert due to climate change. The wants and needs of humankind have pushed the planet into a state that they cannot fix. The only real option for people is to pack up and leave, to colonize another planet and live there. However, as the chorus states, There is no planet B! There's nowhere that these people can go, they're really stuck on a decaying planet. Well, that's not entirely true. There is one other place to live, but it's one that a certain part of the population doesn't want to open up. Yeah, the, 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 I mean, the long-term aspiration is to develop the technologies necessary to transport a large number of people and cargo to, to Mars um, in order to create a self-sustaining civilization there. And that's really why I started the company, was because it seemed to as though... Create, to create the possibility for life on other planets. Yeah, exactly. Um... As the title says, the rich have all moved to Mars, leaving the poor to die. The song is sung from the perspective of someone on Earth who sees the rich enjoying their new life on a planet he'll never get to live on. The idea of colonizing Mars isn't new, however, over the last few years, the push for living there has been reinvigorated. Elon Musk, the current richest man in the world, has stated that he wants one million people living on Mars by 2050. However, Gizzard sees an economic issue arising. The cost for a ticket would be so much that the average person couldn't afford it. The privileged are the only ones with the ability to live on. If you can't afford the ticket, you're stuck on the world that they ruined. Elon seems to know about the issue, however, his proposal to fix it isn't great. It's pretty much a space version of indentured servitude. No matter what happens, the gap between the rich and poor keeps growing. In some ways, the gap can be represented by those planets. We're millions of miles away from Mars, and we're millions of dollars away from being in the 1%. If the economic gap wasn't already apparent, the next song titled Organ Farmer shows how horrible it really is. 
Since there's very little food left on Earth, the rich have started to feast upon the poor. People are raised in laboratories for the sole purpose of consumption. They're the newest form of livestock. This is all happening as people hunt down whatever animals are left and as forests are being cut down. It happens under the eyes of hypocritical governments that say they want people to survive but allow organ farming as a business. The organ farmer knows it all. They know what they're doing is evil. On one hand, they just want to survive. That's only human. But on the other hand, they feel so disgusted by their actions that they want to die. The song showcases the power that the rich have. They're capable of taking advantage of anybody they want to for their own needs. To them, the inhabitants of Earth are disposable. In their minds, they aren't doing much, so why not make them useful? There's no humanity, it's all about personal gain. That's the mindset that people in power have. The last song on the first side is Superbug. A deadly virus infects the world, and the worst part is, it's resistant to drugs. Humanity was given a lot of time to stop it, however they waited, and now it's multiplied and mutated. It's so deadly that it has the ability to wipe out the entire human race. The Superbug is an unstoppable force that doesn't care how old you are or where you came from. It wants you dead. I didn't even mention that it was given an upper hand by humanity's overuse of antibiotics. The Superbug is the last piece of the puzzle for Side 1. The world is dead and everything's in chaos. The rich take advantage of the unprivileged as they live alone on Mars. A virus sweeps the land as forests continue to be destroyed and as animal populations continue to decline. With this, a story starts to unfold. One team decides to try and leave Earth, as it's their only chance of survival. This is the story of the Venusian crew. A team of people on Earth create two spaceships out of waste. They launch the first, Venusian 1, into space in hopes of living on one planet in particular, Venus. Unlike Earth though, Venus is incapable of life. The atmosphere mostly consists of carbon dioxide and it's usually about 872 degrees Fahrenheit there. Yet it's all these travelers have, it's the only place they can really go. To get there, the crew uses the gravitational pull of the sun to launch them towards their destination. However, at the ship's perihelion, a solar flare emerges in front of them. At that point, all they can do is wait for their inevitable deaths. The mission was a failure, but there's one other ship left. It's launched, and by luck, they managed to make it to Venus. They made it to their destination, but the story isn't over. They land and they take their first steps onto the new planet. Instead of starting a new life away from Earth, they combust into flame. It's a pain so unbearable that the crew wishes for death immediately. Yet the travelers also see it as cathartic. They are being taken out of the world that has caused them so much misery. Their bodies burn away on the surface of Venus, but it only serves as a door to another world. The album closes with Hell. The travelers of Venusian 2 find themselves in the underworld, surrounded by all sorts of demons. It's here where they are given a mission by Satan himself. Their job is to infest the rat's nest, to go to Mars and invade. Why? Revenge. Satan knows that the rich have abandoned the world and knows that the crew would probably love to get them back for it. The last few lines have the crew paratroop onto Mars to begin their infestation. The story of Infest the Rat's Nest is a brutal one, full of disease, death, and anger, and if anything, I think it's reflective of how a lot of people are feeling. 
As the world gets hotter, the rich get richer, and a deadly virus continues to take more and more people away from us, the themes of Infest hit incredibly hard. Gizzard isn't deep on this record, but the songs really come together to tell us an intriguing story. It's a warning of where we could end up if we don't start to clean up our act. And sure, while its discussions of Satan, spaceships of human waste, and organ farms remain as fiction, the message remains. Humanity will do anything it wants, even if that means screwing over everything around them. Evil is a byproduct of the greed that's in us, and it's only a matter of time before the consequences set in.